All right, let's look at the last section of this chapter, which deals with genetics. So we're going to start off looking at the cell cycle. This is a repeating cycle of cell growth and cell division. So we have one cell that divides into two cells. We're going to follow that one cell through this process. So after cell division is what we call the G1 phase. All right, so this is when most cell growth occurs. So if you have one cell divides into two cells, those cells are smaller than the original cell, so they have to grow back to the size of the original cell. All right, so here the cell increases in size and also in its number of organelles. And most cells are gonna stop at the end of this phase, and I'll talk about that after we get through this. Next is the S phase. The S phase is where uh, we have DNA, uh, DNA replication occurs. So that's where we make a copy of our DNA, all right? So next after that is the G1 phase, I'm sorry, the G2 phase. And so this is where the cell is preparing for cell division. And after that, we go through the M phase. So the M phase is the entire cell division stage. So uh, we're, it's gonna undergo mitosis and cytokinesis. And we'll get to what those terms mean here in a little bit, all right? And so then it can start all over. So all this in blue right here is what is shown as interphase, all right? So that's not mitosis, all right? So interphase is the period in the cell cycle when the cell is not actively dividing. So that includes the G1S and the G2 phases, all of which are in interphase. Now why most cells stop at the end of the G1 phase is because if we look at our spleen, we look at our liver, you know, we use mitosis and cytokinesis uh, for main, uh, growth, development, maintenance, and repair. So if we're not having maintenance going on, we're not having repair processes going on, we're not growing, uh, we don't need these cells to divide. Our liver doesn't need to constantly increase in size. So they will stop at the end of the G1 phase. If we have some damage to our liver, well, yeah, those liver cells will finish this and then go through mitosis. Now, there are our heart muscle cells that start right there at the end of the G2 phase. And the reason for that is if we damage heart muscle cells, we want to replace them very quickly. Okay, so now let's look at chromosomes. Now, uh, one number that um, we look at is what is known as a diploid number. So the diploid number, abbreviated 2N, this is a cell condition in which there are two sets of chromosomes. All right, you get one of those sets from your mom and the other set from your dad. This is found in uh, somatic cells, which are typical body cells. So for humans, our diploid number is 46 chromosomes. We get 23 chromosomes from our mom and 23 chromosomes from our dad. So that makes 46. Next is our haploid number. So this is 1N, abbreviated 1N. This is a cell condition in which there is only one set of chromosomes. This is found in gametic cells, so uh, egg cells and sperm cells. So you have diploid cells, but when you make a haploid cell, an egg or sperm cell, you're literally giving off only half of your genetics, all right? So the haploid number for humans would be 23, which is half of what the diploid is. Let's look at cell division. In cell division, there are two processes. One process is cytokinesis, that's the division of the cytoplasm, and the other is karyokinesis, which is the division of the nucleus. So there are two types of karyokinesis. One is mitosis. And this is a division of a nucleus into two genetically identical daughter nuclei. So we start off with one diploid cell, we're gonna end up with two diploid cells. And this is how we make somatic cells. So we use this for uh, growth, development, uh, maintenance, and repair. Meiosis is division of a diploid nucleus into four haploid nuclei. And that's the second type of karyokinesis. All right, we start with one diploid nucleus, we end up with four haploid nuclei. And this is how we make GANs, egg and sperm cells. If we look at DNA replication, that's where the DNA makes a copy of itself. That occurs before mitosis or meiosis. And so what we get here is if we looked at a chromosome before DNA replication, this is a horrible thing, so this is what it looks like before, and then we undergo uh, DNA replication, here's what it looks like afterwards. This is what it looks like afterwards. Let's try this one and see if it works a little better. It doesn't. All right, 
So what we get out of here is we have one side, this whole thing is called a duplicated chromosome, all right? And so on one side here and the other side, all right, so this is what we started with before, all right? This is what we get done at the end, all right? So this is a duplicated chromosome, and it's made of two sister chromatids. So this is a sister chromatid of this. This has all the exact same genetic information as this over here, all right? And so what's going to happen in mitosis is we're going to separate these sister chromatids from each other, all right? Oh, these are held together at what is known as the centromere, which is that circle, um, is that area in the middle right there. So, okay. So now let's take a look at mitosis. Very briefly here. Um, there we go. Okay. So in mitosis, DNA replication has already occurred. We have those X-shaped uh, chromosomes. So we're going to start off with one diploid cell. We're going to end up with two diploid cells. So in prophase, what's going to happen here? So this is showing interphase here. Now it's prophase. Here in prophase, those chromosomes appear. So uh, the chromatin condenses down into chromosomes. Now we can see them. All right. The nuclear envelope is going to fragment and disappear. That's a covering around the nucleus. Mitotic spin or spindle fibers form. That's what these things are trying to show. And centrioles are going to move to opposite ends of the cell. All right. So, uh, and then the spindle fibers, these fibers attach to the chromosomes. What happens next in metaphase is those chromosomes are lined up in the middle of the cell. All right. In anaphase, what's going to happen here is the sister chromatids are separated from each other. Sister chromatids are separated. These are now daughter, called daughter chromosomes. These are going to move to opposite ends of the cell. All right. All right. In telophase, what's going to happen is those chromosomes have completed their movement. And so new, uh, the, my, the spindle fibers disappear. New nuclear envelopes form around those. Cytokinesis is nearly complete. So we pinch that cell almost into two cells. And then after this, we have these daughter cells here, and we're back into interphase. Okay? So, we start off with this. We undergo DNA replication. It becomes this. In mitosis, we're going to separate those sister chromatids from each other, now called daughter chromosomes. And one set's going to go into one cell. The other set's going to go in the other cell. So, we start off with 46 of this. becomes 46 of this. Get separated, we get 46 in one cell here, 46 in the other cell. 